Okay, today's test model is a BMW 6 Series. It is an 06. And Bruce, how many miles did you say? Uh, 72,000. Oh, 72,000. Now, I invited Bruce on camera with me, but he denied, which as I've told you guys many times, it is very difficult to not only pick the right moment to shoot these videos, because often in neighborhoods, I've got Johnny Trashman, the gardeners, uh, neighbors pulling in and out, so it gets very difficult, you know, because the noise, maybe you have to move uh, the camera, whatever. So I invited Bruce, he says, and I'll quote him, it's like, hell no, I don't want my fat ass on camera. <laughs> and actually, it's not that fat, by the way. So he's just self deprecating. Anyhow, but there's a couple things I want to teach you guys in this moment. One of them specifically because I had someone call it. Actually, there's two things. One is about the polishes I use. The second is working in the direct sunlight. Now, what I had to do here is Bruce found me online. Do you recall the search that you did? Like I just what did a local keywords? Orange County uh, auto detailing. So just de with, it wasn't with, like with, chip. Yeah, with chip repair. Okay, so you did a chip repair yeah. search, yeah. Orange County. Okay, and once again, if you're a new uh, subscriber, Orange County is the county we live in, and generally people from OC call it OC for short. So he did a search, he found me. I do optimize my page for uh, car paint chip repair, so typically I'm going to come up on the first or second page. Called me up, said he also wanted to get something done with the paint. He bought this used. Uh, as you notice, it's got some badass wheels on it. These are these are AC Schnitzers, which is a tuner for BMW BMW specifically. A very high-end wheel, a very quality wheel. And as I say, wheels can truly transform a car into a sleeper, into something that you gotta look at. Anyhow, so there's some chips I'm gonna fix. I'm gonna do some polishing to correct. Uh, a certain amount of swirl marks, wash scratch, spider webbing. There's so many terms that are used. You can call it whatever you want. Now, what Bruce did not notice is that it looked like the previous owner had literally set a box on top of the roof panel here and slid it off. And so there were some pretty substantial scratches. So I told him, I said, hey, I could do some wet sanding. I could remove a good share of those scratches but, and this is where managing expectations come in, they will not all be gone. But I can almost guarantee you that I can camouflage it by removing and polishing to the point that you would really have to look at it in order to see it. So that brings me to the two specific points of this video. Because I think it was you, buddy, who I only get an email from that says Gmail. I don't know why you have no avatar or name on it, but I know it's you. So buddy, you asked, hey Darren, have you ever tried the Meguiar's 105 and 205? And I responded, I said, yes. In fact, I used those polishes for years and that was my go-to polish until I came across Minzerna. And I have never looked back. And one of the things, and despite what the labels say, because virtually every label will tell you, do not use in direct sunlight. Okay, that's just manufacturers covering their ass, okay? Now, with that said, would it be easier in the shade or w without the direct sunlight? Of course it would. But that's where you as a detailer can control it. So I use a couple strategies. So for example, so for example, I've got my trusty heat gun. So I'm going to, okay, 134, 140, 141. Let's try it again. Okay, so we're going up to 142. That's pretty warm. Okay, we'll call it hot. <laughs> because if I leave my hand there for more than two seconds, it gets to the point where I'm gonna start burning my hand. Now, if this was black, it would probably be approaching more like 160, 165. That's pretty hot. So let me take a reading on the roof because that's where I had to, okay, 148. This is where materials absorb the UV radiation from the sun and they heat up. So a couple things is there's strategies 
for example, when you're polishing, you're going to naturally create friction anyways, and the surface will heat up. So the reality is, is if this was cold paint, you would be heating it up anyways. Well, guess what? It's already hot. So at a level, you've already just bypassed that heating up process and you can kind of cut to the chase. But you also have to understand that it's hotter and so therefore you will have to reduce the panel size of which you can work. You may have to increase the product in which you have, will work. But I also use the pad washer. I season my pad with water first and so that helps spread the polish around and I can work in the direct sunlight. Also a trick is we have the synthetic chamois. Now my personal go-to synthetic chamois is the water sprite. I've literally used this for 25 years. Now I don't use chamois very often anymore because I prefer the microfiber, but I still use this when I'm using the clay bar or what you can do, like for example, this uh, roof, if it was too hot, if I determined that it was too hot to polish on, then what I could do is in a little preparation, I get it damp and I cover this section. Now, when I'm exactly ready to polish, I uncover it, I polish it, and then I cover up the next section and I move on. You'll also notice that literally, okay, the sun is right there. So if this side is all in the sun, guess what's on the other side? That's right, shade nice and cool. So I could polish that side if I wanted to, flip the car around, and then polish this side, which is now over there, after it's cooled down, and I will have some cool shaded area. So the main areas will be the top surfaces, which like I said, I can break down with this section by section if I needed to. So despite what you hear or what the label says, there's there's probably not a product that I do not use that I have not figured out some off-label use for. I'm constantly trying to push my brain outside the box and think, okay, what else can I accomplish with this product? So that leads me to the third point I wanna make because the first is working in the sun, the second is the polishes. Manzerna, I absolutely love them. In fact, before I get to that third point, let me show you something because I have wet sanded this panel and I'm gonna show you in different lighting. Now I have used a wool pad with the Mizerna compound, FG400 I believe, I'll verify in a moment. Now typically when I used to use the Meguiar's 105 which is their cutting polish, there would be swirl marks. Now just to let you know, I did more than just wipe the polish off. I literally used some rubbing alcohol, uh, my mixture of rubbing alcohol and distilled water to make sure I removed every trace bit of polish so that the swirl marks would actually show up because my next step is to remove the swirl marks. But guess what you're not seeing? You're right, swirl marks. Why is there no swirl marks? Well, this is where I'm just that in love with the Minzerna polish because I can literally use a wool pad and a cutting wool pad which is right here on my rotary buffer and I just picked up yet another pint of the FG 400 and if I can do that and not have swirl marks to me that is pretty impressive and that is why I'm so in love with these two products the other one is the Minzerna and you'll notice the different caps because this is a newer version is the F or I'm sorry SF 4000 which is their superior performance polish which I will use as the final step so buddy in response to your question that is why I have stuck with the Mizerna and I've never looked back now is there other polishes out there that can perform like that I'm sure there are but just like you I've only got so much time in every day I've only got so much money in my pocket so sometimes I just don't need to overthink it and just go with it unless I'm forced to or I have time to experiment with more and more polishes. The third point I want to make, which I have now forgotten. Okay, I forgot my third point, so I had to shut it off and I'm sitting here talking with Bruce, the owner of this car, and I'm going, oh my gosh, Bruce, I just have too much on the hard drive. I cannot remember what it is and it was a critical point. 
and uh, and, I, and it's something that I want to share with you guys because it it very well could come up. It has come up multiple times in my career. So I have this lady, she's from South County, uh, San Clemente, if you're familiar with this area, and she called me up, she found me online, and she says, hey Darren, you know what, I'm trying to find a good detailer. Of course, we all want a good detailer versus a bad detailer, right? Who goes looking for a bad detailer? Let's see, bad detailing, Orange County. It's not gonna happen. So she's looking for a good detailer. And she's calling around, and she used to live in Huntington Beach. Now there's a uh, facility there called, I believe, Dr. Detail. So if Dr. Detail, you happen to be watching this, here's your little plug. Costa Mesa. Yep, right on, um, is it Placentia Avenue? Yeah, something like that. So how's that for some free advertising for you, Dr. Detail? Because I'm all about spreading the wealth because there's plenty of business out there. If you're doing a good job, more power to you. So she used to go to Dr. Detail. Well, this is where you have to realize as a mobile detailer, you are also adding convenience because for in this case, Bruce doesn't have to take his car anywhere. I come to him. He can do whatever he wants. He actually likes to watch me work because he's going to pick up some tips that he can now apply to his own car, whatever. So she's saying, Darren, you know, I don't want to take my car back to him. I used to go to him, but it's really inconvenient. And I just want to know, like, why a mobile guy? Like, okay. And in fact, she asked exactly what I would ask her because a lot of people are so ignorant they don't even know the right questions to ask so she simply said Darren what do you think they would tell me if I called them up because I've been going to them for years I said well I'll tell you exactly what they're gonna tell you they're gonna say oh I would never trust a mobile guy because he's working outdoors you've got the air uh, pollution dust go down the list it's like that's probably what he's gonna tell you and she goes you know what that's actually what they did tell me and I said well bingo and that's what they'll say. But the reality is, it's like everything. It's just like I got done explaining with working in the sun. You make adjustments, okay? So yes, if you had a shop, it's all nice contained, it's protected, it's out of the sun. But does that mean that you're truly limited? Maybe if you found the right subject, I would say yes. But they're also limited in ways as well. And this is why it's nice with the free market, people have choices. Do I want the convenience of a detailer that's mobile as long as I know he can perform? Or do I want to take the time and effort to drop off my car, get a ride home, you know, rearrange my schedule, go back, pick it up, blah, blah, blah. And then guess what they're going to do? They're going to keep it in the shade in their shop and then Johnny Customer is going to show up and he's going to inspect it in the shade. Well, guess what? Most people do not spend the majority of their time inspecting the car in the shade. It's going to be in the sun as they're coming and going from the mall. They see their car 20 feet away and they start looking at it and go, wow, yeah, my car looks great. Oh, yeah, those swirl marks are gone. Or they're coming from the market, whatever. So that's what I could say if I wanted to. I really don't try to spin it in my favor. I just say, hey, this, this, these are the limitations. Uh, these are the benefits. I will just help you become an informed consumer so you can make an informed decision. So in my world, I know that I just make adjustments. It's just like polishing in the direct sun. If I need to, I cover it up, cool it down. I can use more polish, less polish, more water, less water, more speed, greater speed. I can configure it and adjust it because what I'm doing is I'm responding to the environment in which I have to work in. So ultimately, she liked the very candid, honest approach that I took with her, and she signed up for Darren. So I did her car, she was a happy camper. It was a win-win for both of us. And you know me, I'm always talking about that win-win. If both sides do not walk away with a win, I gotta say no. Anyhow, so that's something I wanted to add in a way you can address that if it ever comes up in your world. Okay, a couple things. I'm out here working. I'm talking to Bruce, and uh, yet another thing he noticed is that I use very little polish. Now, because of the color of this car, and because of the polished Manzerna itself, which I think is a just an excellent product, swirl marks are gonna or buffer tracks, holograms. Those are the various names that they are attached to that effect of a buffer. Um, buffer trails, whatever. 
point is, is it's not going to be a great issue on this car. This car has some very um, hard clear coat. Now that's a subject that just once again, uh, amongst of the many subjects in the detailing world, the hard and soft clear coat debate just frustrates me. And it's not that it's not valid because it absolutely is. It's just that when someone makes a sweeping generalization and says that all BMW 6 Series have extremely hard clear coats, therefore you have to use blank type of polish. Well, guess what? It doesn't matter. You know why? Because the manufacturer is not going to send us detailers or the uh, car dealers a uh, memo saying, hey, by the way, we've changed our formulation or we've changed our vendor and now we're getting our clear coats from this vendor and it's much harder so you need to get the word out. It's never going to happen and it's literally a case by case. Literally even the exact model, the exact color, the exact year they can change where they get their clear coat from or the manufacturer can change their formulation. So you could have identical cars, years, uh, color, everything and one will respond differently than the other. So that's why that debate spins me out of control. You go to the forums and they talk about endlessly about, oh, this manufacturer, BMWs all have hard clear coat, or BMWs all have soft clear coat, therefore you have to be careful, or you have to use this special polish, or this special pad, or whatever. Well, the fact is, is like anything in the detail world is you, the person behind the tools, the products, and your techniques, you can custom tailor it to the moment. And that's where you have to decide based on the information that's being fed back to you. That's why I always say you test it, you check for results, and then you respond to those results. Hopefully you don't have to go in reactionary mode because you're getting some bad results and you have to go in panic mode. It's like, ah, I did not see that coming. Yes, that will happen to you. And that's where you gotta reel yourself in and then choose an appropriate response rather than an inappropriate reaction. Okay, reactionary mode's no good. Responding mode, good. So, he was noticing that I used very low polish. Now, the, I will show you, I don't know if it's uh, showing or not, so let me pan down for a moment. This is my pad washer. To me, if you're gonna do some serious polishing, and by serious, I mean lots of it. Let me get my headphones out of the way here. Um, this is a danger zone, by the way. You have your wires, I like to listen to my music, and your wires will drop down under your buffer, get watered up, and next thing you know, it's yanking it off your, uh, off your uh, whatever device. So, I always pre-season my pads. That's one of the many reasons the pad washer is so ideal. Now I've been buffing on this car for a couple hours already, so I'm kind of, um, you know, going backwards in this moment, but, but I just wanted to show you based on what Bruce said um, in the fact that I don't use much polish. So to start out with, I season the pad so it's primed. It's, it's now damp. Now there is a separate little attachment you can put, put here and it's called a pad dryer. I don't use that. What I do is a microfiber cloth, I turn it on, I allow it to spin and that mops up any excess moisture. Also as I'm polishing it will also mop up any additional polish that's remaining on the pad that was not washed away with the pad washer. Anyhow when you use it you'll get it. You'll see what I'm talking about. So that's what I do when it comes to using the foam pad. Um, and this I will show you now that it's been pre-seasoned, it's clean, I don't use much polish. Okay, I know there's all kinds of, you know, camps out there that will talk about the X pattern or the swirl pattern, whatever. You know what? You're going to do what works for you. The point is, is it does not require much polish. And as a beginner, because we've been groomed as society to think that more is always better. Well, if that's good and I want better, well, then I just need to add more polish. Well, guess what? It will actually just be that, more polish. It's not going to produce any better results for you. In fact, if you use enough polish, it will actually become counterproductive to you as the user. 
and it will wad up, it will gum up, you'll make a bigger mess, you'll go through more polish. Of course, Minzerna will love that because you'll have to buy more product sooner. So it requires very little. That amount of polish right there is enough to do a single panel on this, which I would call an average size panel. So this door actually is not an average size panel because it's a coupe. Therefore, it has a bigger door or a longer door. So that's a little oversize in relation to most panels, but this is enough to do it. notice that I went up and down back and forth and I even did it diagonal you know why that was just to over dramatize the moment because just like putting wax on your car there's this endless debate of like oh I would never go in a swirl pattern because that will create swirl marks I only go back and forth it's like okay I have a whole nother video on that it's the same with this the point is is you just want to make sure that you are overlapping and you're getting every area of the panel so whether you want to go back and forth, up and down, diagonal, do whatever floats your shorts. Uh, you'll figure it out. As a rule, I just tend to go back and forth and up and down. I keep it basic and I know that way I'm sure to cover every spot and I overlap the spots. So if I, if I do this panel, I'm going to make sure I'm going to overlap. Now this has a natural break or character line here that separates from this point up to here so that part's easy. But from here, moving backwards, I'm going to overlap this section to make sure I have complete polish uh, action in the middle. Okay, folks, I'm back for the big reveal. Wait for it. Wait for it. Ba bam Here we are. Now, this is what I talk about trying to get all the variables to come together. So I have a cloud that is floating over. So yes, it looks spectacular, but I was hoping for the clouds or actually the sun to be just glaring down on this and revealing its true glory in the direct sunlight. So this will have to suffice in the moment. Like I say, I can't control mother nature, but I can certainly bring you in for the after effect. So here we are, um, quite a few hours later, quite a bit of sweat later, but the uh, rewards are substantial. See those clouds, that reflection, is that cool or what? Well, I think it's cool. How cool you guys think it is or not is up to you, but me and Bruce think it's pretty cool. Okay, so hopefully you guys have learned, or gals, I know there's a few of you out there, have learned a little something on the way. So thank you, Bruce, for participating and letting us uh, use your car as a canvas and a teaching opportunity for all those out there.